now at 11, a new target for scammers. Some applying for paid leave in Oregon get their identity stolen instead. And later. We have to move to the prevention, another reaction. Pulling back on punishments, the new disciplinary policies designed to help with students' mental health. Plus, the Ducks and the Huskies come face to face in Vegas. The full breakdown of tonight's showdown in the Pac-12 championship. First on KGW News at 11, snow makes way for a washout of a weekend. While we're still seeing wintry scenes like this in the mountains, and that is something, rain will be the main event for most of our area this weekend. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Evan Watson and for David, we're checking in first with, of course, Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino on the latest of what you can expect. Matt, yeah, what are you looking at? Yeah, Evan, it's going to be a pretty wild weekend all around the Northwest. We'll take you back up to the mountains right now and start there because that's where it's most dramatic at the moment. This is one of our two cameras at Timberline Lodge in the Mount Hood National Forest. You can see the snow is just flying 26 degrees and since yesterday, that's right, 21 inches of new snow at Timberline, which is why they are opening tomorrow for skiing. Now, if you plan on going, it's going to be a blustery day. You can see there's the crew working the snow in the parking lot there. It'll be blustery. There'll be early season obstacles as there always is when we have a shallow snowpack like we do, but they'll be skiing on Mount Hood tomorrow. So that's the good news. This is from the camera at uh, Highway 35 in the entrance to the Mount Hood Meadows Drive. So it's still just dumping up there. As you can see, the passes also covered in snow. That's Sandy Ann Pass. That's Willamette Pass. Temperatures right around freezing, so it's not that cold for the mountains and the valleys have warmed up. We're in the 40s here and over in the gorge where they had snow this morning. Temperatures have actually been increasing and warming up overnight tonight. It's 45 at Wyeth, Odell 40, Hood River 36. Trout Lake has bumped up a couple degrees too. So the snow that we had in the gorge in the upper valley is melting away and there's no more on the way there. It's all rain from here on out. See no warnings in the gorge, but we still have a winter storm warning in the Cascades and for the valleys. It's a flood watch in effect now continues until Tuesday because that's how long the heavy rain will be coming down. It's 48 in Portland right now. Winds out of the south and in fact that south wind is going to get a bit brisk, frisky overnight tonight, early tomorrow morning with the next weather system that's coming our way. So the rain will increase tonight as will the wind peak in the morning, then back off a little bit into showers tomorrow. But then the next system comes in tomorrow night and Sunday. That's when the mountain snow turns to rain. In the meantime, treacherous mountain roads and we'll be watching the rivers very closely, Evan, because they will be rising inches of rain. More on that in a bit. Back to you. Oh yeah, ski season starting up. The Washington Huskies are the Pac-12 champions winning the title tonight in what will be the last championship game for that conference. While Ducks fans may be disappointed, Oregon did put up a good fight. Orlando Sanchez is live in Vegas tonight with the action. How's it going, Orlando? Yeah, Evan, round one was a classic. The sequel lived up to the hype. The Ducks essentially obsessed over getting another shot at Washington. A month and a half later, the stakes higher than ever. The result turned out to be very similar, and that feeling, the same. Heartbreak. The flock touched down in the desert. Let's go, Ducks! A pregame party. Thousands of Ducks making the trip to Las Vegas in hopes of witnessing something special. Big game, big stakes along the Vegas Strip, including inside Allegiant Stadium, the roar of more than 61,000 fans, a sellout crowd, number three Washington versus fifth ranked Oregon, the Pac-12 championship. Huskies set the tone, scoring on back-to-back -back drives. Dylan Johnson rumbling into the house, silencing Ducks fans with 153 yards on the ground, two TDs. Michael Penix Jr. carving up the Ducks, making them pay one pass at a time. The Huskies scored points on every trip to the red zone in the first half, building a 20-3 lead. It was the Ducks' worst half of football this season. They struggled on third down and couldn't establish the run. But still, the offense came to life. Bo Nix to Terrence Ferguson. Two-yard TD for the highlight reel to close out the half. Third quarter, Ducks double down. Gambling on fourth and goal, same two at it again. Nix, 239 yards passing, three touchdowns. The Ducks defense banged up, multiple injuries, but Nico Reed, 
chases down Penix for the sack. A huge stop on fourth down. Momentum shifting in the Ducks' favor. Jordan James to the crib. Oregon scores 21 unanswered for the first lead of the game on top 24-20. But the fourth quarter belongs to the Huskies, reeling off 14 straight. Penix leading the charge, the game's most valuable player, tossing 319 yards and the TD that proved to be the difference. The Huskies do it again, defeating the Ducks for a second time by three points, ending Oregon's championship dreams, winning the Pac-12 title 34-31. Yeah, well, football is a tough game, and sometimes you put it all out there and uh, you come up short. And, um, you know, there at the end, it was just one of those things where you want the moment to last longer than what it can. And um, just even though we, we lost, it was one of those type of games that it was really fun to play in. And, um, you know, it was just, you know, a shocking end. There's disappointment in that locker room because of how hard these guys work. I haven't been around a team that works this hard and uh, hurt for them because I wanted them to have this one. An emotional day on so many levels. This, all that's left from the final Pac-12 championship game as we know it, painting over the Pac-12 logo, getting ready for another game here at Allegiant Stadium. As for the Ducks, college football playoff dreams dashed the Heisman Trophy hopes take a big hit today, and now they get an opportunity to play one more time, likely a New Year's Six game, but we will find all of that out in the coming days. As for the Huskies, likely on to the college football playoff. Isn't Reporting that a symbol from there? Las Vegas at Allegiant Stadium, Orlando Sanchez, KGW Sports. Yeah, Arlando, the symbol there of just painting over the logo in the Pac-12 in this game. It really speaks volumes, doesn't it? Odunze, McMillan, Johnson all look great tonight. Thanks so much. Scammers at it again. This time, they're targeting Paid Leave Oregon, a program that just started a few, moments, a few months ago. Since the beginning of September, tens of thousands of people have applied for benefits, but some are finding that fraudsters are attempting to open accounts with their information. Alma McCarty breaks down those frustrations and the agency's work to prevent it. Alma. Yeah, well, Evan, paid leave Oregon allows eligible Oregonians up to 12 weeks paid time off from work for family, medical or safety needs. For many, this program is a godsend, but that's only if they're able to receive the benefits. We talked with one new dad who says it's been a struggle ever since he found out he was a victim of identity theft. Paid Leave Oregon launched on September 3rd, just days before the birth of Jeff Jenks' daughter. So my daughter was born 916. She was uh, due 97. Uh, and so we had always planned on taking leave, but I talked to colleagues in Washington and they actually recommended not applying right away, waiting about a month. And so that's what I did. But on the October day he was going to apply, he received a notice from the Oregon Employment Department. We received a letter saying that I was, um, I needed more information for my claim, a claim I hadn't made. Jeff got in touch with Paid Leave Oregon and staff confirmed he'd been a victim of fraud, someone filing in his name. So they filed the fraud case, they gave me a fraud confirmation number and told me someone would be in touch with next steps on how I could then file and how they could close the case. But he says that investigation's still underway. And after numerous phone calls with lengthy wait times and daily emails, answers remain unclear. And I've not even had the right to file yet because I'm waiting on the fraud case to close. In a state of limbo, he's concerned about whether he'll ever get his paid leave benefits. I can't imagine how many people are actually in the same boat. The director of Paid Leave Oregon said in a press briefing mid-November that many Oregonians have received letters for paid leave claims they didn't file, although she could not share the exact number. Just like any benefits program, unfortunately, people try to commit fraud against the Paid Leave Oregon program. This includes people who are using stolen identities to file fraudulent claims. She explained there's been no data breach at the employment department or within the paid leave program but they're actively working to prevent fraud and identify theft claims. The system is correctly flagging those and sending the person a letter to verify their identity. In a follow-up email this week, a spokesperson said, quote, it can take time to unravel the real person from the imposter, but we will do all we can to make sure benefits are available to people when they are needed. 
Jeff hopes they'll follow through on this commitment in time for him and for his family. But I'd like to be able to recognize and use some of that leave. My wife was planning on ending her leave um, around the new year because she was com combining it with PTO. And so my hope was to have leave by then so I could take some time off with my child. Yeah, the employment department says that they do not give out information about how much fraud is happening because they say it puts their ability to combat the fraud at risk. They also shared advice on how to protect yourself and how people can speed up their claim. That will be up soon on KGW.com. Evan? Frustrating process. Thanks, Alma. Let's get you caught up on tonight's other headlines. A man has been arrested for allegedly selling fake pills laced with fentanyl to three Portland teenagers. A 15-year-old girl then died from an overdose. Police say one of the teens bought the pills from 20-year-old Nasir Overton, thinking they were oxycodone. Federal court documents show investigators found photos and text messages on the suspect's phone indicating he was selling the drugs. His charges carry a maximum sentence of life in prison. Some female athletes at the University of Oregon are suing the school over alleged Title IX violations. The athletes are part of the beach volleyball teams and club rowing teams. The lawsuit alleges a lack of financial support and a lack of opportunities to play compared to male athletes. The lawsuit seeks damages for the athletes and asks the school to bring in a gender equity expert for a full review. In a statement, the University of Oregon said it believes it does comply with Title IX. And starting today, Washington County has a new sheriff, and she's the first woman to be sheriff in the county's history. Under Sheriff Caprice Massey took the oath of office this morning and became the county's 33rd sheriff. Massey says she's excited and humbled by the opportunity. She's replacing Pat Garrett, who's retiring after 12 years in the role.